In the middle of summer, as the sun shines, the storms that batter the UK throughout February will be a long and distant memory for many. For some sports clubs, both amateur and professional, the increase in frequency and severity of these episodes is threatening their very existence. One club that found themselves on the brink was Bridgeham Cricket Club in West Yorkshire. In an area heavily affected by flooding in recent years, the ECB and the dedication of Keith Hudson have combined to save this picturesque ground from being washed away. I don't really look at it as a ground, it's more of a back garden. So, yeah, and then, like I said, I've lived here since 1963. I did move house once, I moved next door when the, uh, the, the house nearest the club became available. I'm a very lucky man. The cost of replacing a cricket ground if it was lost averages at about a million pounds and we have three and a half thousand clubs who have asset control over a cricket ground in the country so that's three and a half billion pounds worth of assets out there um, beyond that though the value of a cricket club to the community i'd argue is priceless so what we need to spend to protect that and to support them to be more resilient i think is every pound is money well spent. The ground itself floods three or four times a year, but there's different severities of floods. People see it flooded and it's flooded from one side to the other, a foot deep, all the way across. But if it's just water, that's not a problem. The serious floods come when it breaches our bankings uh, and our defences and comes on directly with force so it can bring debris, detritus, silt, sand, everything. In 2015 it was extremely bad. We'd almost completed what we thought was a decent flood defence, nearly joined up two walls together and then it flooded and it uh, used this opening to, uh, to increase its flooding on our ground and, and destroy half of the work that we'd already done. We approached the ECB, see what they could do and they came along with some funding and we reinstated the wall and completed it uh, to a level that we thought, well, that should, that should do all right. Back in 2015, when they were flooded by storms, Desmond and Eva, Keith personally worked 15 hours a day from darkness to darkness, it was in December, to move over 100 tonnes of silt off the ground by hand because they couldn't get machinery down here. it was uh, a very serious flood again uh, and I think there was a slight change in the seriousness of the flood further upstream the, the river attached itself and joined forces with the Rochdale Canal which is also quite adjacent to us and both became one uh, and attacked our ground from a slightly different angle so rather than running adjacent to the wall it was coming at right angles to the wall and it just lifted the wall in its entirety almost and threw it on the field and then it continued to do its damage thereafter. A lot of people thought that that was the end of cricket at Bridge Home and uh, I, can't, I must admit probably at one, it did cross my mind for about a day. We had to fix the wall obviously. Problem was, first quote, I think it was £92,000 just to do the wall. So I knew that we weren't really going to likely get that quantity of uh, funding. So I went to the ECB and I talked to Dan Musson. Uh, he'd been very helpful during 2015. I explained the situation and he virtually just said, look, Keith, we'll do everything we can to help you. We work on three phases of support. The first phase is stabilisation. Usually that's making sure that, that everything's safe. Um, that they can start to um, assess damage, repair, make immediate repairs um, that can just get the club back on its feet. The second phase of, uh, of, of support is restoration. So it's bringing those facilities back up to playable standard or uh, getting the clubhouses open again and, and operating um, as best as they can. And then our third phase, which is usually the longest, most complex phase, is uh, resilience and future proofing and we try and work with anyone who's been flooded 
to see where we can improve things and where, where we can hopefully help them, uh, if not prevent flooding, at least be more resilient in the, fu in the future. Yeah, and I said, look, well, I think if I take this job on board and, and I, I see it through myself, I can half that cost. I then employed a brickie for five weeks. So I laboured on him. I started at seven in the morning and finished at 10 at night. And Shane was doing eight till four o'clock. So I had to prep before he did. I did all the mixing, all the block laying out, all the steel work, all the grinding, all the finishing off. And then when he went home, prep for the next day, get the block where he wanted it, liaise with him, say, what do you want it now? That, that, that. Got all that ready. Next day, start again. Up at seven, mix on before he turns up. He turns up, he's straight on the tools, bish, bash, bosh. Five weeks later, we've got a wall. But I've been working for ECB for 16 years now and there's no one that I've met that's put more time, effort and energy into a cricket club than, than Keith Hudson at Bridgeheim. He's uh, a volunteer who is an official for the Halifax Cricket League and he's helped and given his time to help lots of the clubs, including when he's still been working on his own club being flooded. So, yeah, he's quite simply legendary. I think knowledge is at its best when it's spread. You know, it, there's, uh, it always, I always feel sad when I see a, a trained man pass away with all the knowledge and the, the craft that he had in him. It, it, it's best to pass it on. If you, if you spread the knowledge and spread the, spread the ideas across the board and the understanding and how to cope with things, it makes life so much easier for everybody and it, isn't that a good thing? We're also now starting to build for the future. Uh, so we've put in place for the first time a dedicated fund to tackle climate change. That's part of our county grants fund and we're anticipating spending a million pounds this year with clubs on, on projects that will help with flood resilience, also drought resilience and um, energy saving and water management. Uh, as we move forward in the future, we're working with each of the 39 counties in England and Wales to create a 10 year plan for facilities that will include a tackling climate change plan that's tailored to every county. So that might mean in Yorkshire, um, considering flooding as, as a key priority, uh, but in, in Kent, drought might be more of a threat to clubs. In every part of the country, clubs will be under threat from rising costs and, and scarcity of water and energy. Any cricket club uh, who's been affected by, by storm damage or flooding um, we're here to help. Uh, you can contact us via um, an email to facilities at ecb.co.uk or talk into your local county board. Uh, county, county boards have development offices up and down the country. Many clubs will already be in touch with them. Um, but drop us an email if required. Uh, we've also got advice and guidance on our website. It's on the front homepage of ecb.co.uk. Um, and we will help you and connect you up with Sport England as well as and when you need that support. I'm grateful for everything that I've got, I really am. And, and to be playing in my latter years, shall we say, uh, back with his son, opening the batting with him, and uh, that's, that's a bonus, it's a bonus. It makes a lot of this worthwhile. I mean, I enjoy playing with the lads that I play with, but it's a special thing when you get to play alongside your son. So, I mean, every father should have that chance to do that at whatever level or whatever sport or whatever things they do. If it's going for a walk, if it's painting, if it's doing anything, do it with your son or your daughter. Enjoy it because it's so much more special. Yeah, I'm very lucky.